Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at how you can write ionic equations for displacement reactions. So to be able to do this, the first thing you need to be able to do is have a look at a balanced equation and tell me what the charges of the different ions are. So I'm going to start off with a quick recap on how you can work out the charge of any ion in a balanced equation. Okay, to be able to work out the charge for any ion for any element in the periodic table. The first thing you need to be able to do is look at the groups. So I'm going to start off with groups 1 to 7. Now as we can see here, you should be able to remember the group number tells you the, num the number of electrons in the outer shell. So group 1 has 1 electron in the outer shell, group 2 has 2 in the outer shell, group 3 has 3, group 4 has 4, and so on all the way up to group 7. This also tells you the number of electrons that an atom wants to either lose or gain. So because Lithium, or group 1, has 1 in the outer shell, it's easier to lose 1 electron than it is to gain 7. Group 2, it's easier to lose 2 electrons than it is to gain 6. Group 3, easier to lose 3 than gain 5. Group 4, either could happen, so it could lose 4 or it could gain 4. Group 5 has 5 in the outer shell, so it's easier to gain 3 electrons than it is to lose 5. Group 6, it's easier to gain 2 electrons than to lose 6. And group 7, it's easier to gain 1 than to lose 1. So once you know whether an element wants to lose or gain, and how many, the next thing to remember is that the charge for everything that loses becomes positive, and everything that gains becomes negative. And then the charge is just how many it loses or gains. So group 1 loses 1 becomes plus 1. Group 2 loses 2 becomes 2 plus. Group 3 loses 3 becomes 3 plus. Group 4, if it loses, becomes 4 plus. And then if it gains electrons, it becomes negative. So if it gains 4 electrons, it becomes 4 minus. If it gains 3 electrons, 3 minus. Gains 2 electrons, 2 minus. Gains 1 electron, 1 minus. So you can look at any element, for example, magnesium, which is in group 2. Therefore, it's always going to be 2 plus. If you had sulfur, it's in group 6. It's always going to be 2 minus and so on. Now there are a few polyatomic compound ions, ones that you just have to remember. They are hydroxide, which is OH-, hydrogen, which is H+, carbonate, which is CO3-2-. Remember that 3 down at the bottom is not part of the charge, the charge is the 2-. Minus. Nitrate, which is NO3-, minus. again it's a minus 1 charge, that 3 is not part of the charge and sulfate, which is SO4, 2 minus. Again, the 2 minus is the charge. The third little bit on the ionic charge recap is your transition metals. Now you can't work out the charge of a transition metal just from looking at the periodic table, but a lot of times they'll give you the information in the question. So if they tell you you've got copper 2 sulfate, that 2 tells you the charge. You know now that all metals are positive, so it would be copper Cu2 plus. If you had iron 3 oxide, again that 3 tells you it becomes Fe3+. You can also work out the charge even if it doesn't give you that. So if it gives you the formula, let's say for iron oxide here, for Fe2O3, you know oxygen is in group 6, therefore you know it is 2 minus. The formula tells me we've got 3 oxygens, so that's 3 lots of O2 minus, giving me an overall negative charge of 6 minus. Therefore, my positive charge must be 6 plus because they cancel each other out. Now I know I've got two ions, therefore two of my ions make 6 plus. So what does one ion make? It's going to be 3 plus. 6 plus divided by 2 gives me 3 plus, so my charge for my ion here is 3 plus. So you can always use the formula to work out the charges. If I look at another example, nickel chloride, Chlorine's in group 7, therefore I know my charge is minus 1. I've got 2 of them, therefore my total charge is 2 minus. Therefore my 1 nickel has got to be 2 plus. There's only one of them, so it's Ni2 plus. Okay, now you know that. The next thing to do is to have a look at the state symbols, and that is one of the key things when it comes to writing ionic equations. So the first thing 
is we've got a G, which tells us we've got a gas. We've got AQ, which means aqueous, so that's dissolved. And L, which means liquid. The other one, not in this example, is S, which is your solid. So once you've got that down, the next thing to remember is you only split up the aqueous ions. They're the only ones where the ions are free to move. So everything else goes down as it is. So chlorine stays as Cl2G and bromine goes as Br2L. Now what you need to do is work out for the aqueous solutions what the ions are. So potassium is in group one. It has one electron in the outer shell. It loses that electron and becomes K plus. There are two of them looking at our balanced equation. So we put two K plus down below. Iodine is in group seven. So it gains one electron. Therefore it becomes I minus. Again, we've got two of it. So it's two I minus. So my reactants are now Cl2 plus two K plus plus two I minus. I now do the same on the right hand side. Potassium stays the same, so it's 2K plus. And chlorine, which is in group 7 again, gains one electron, becomes Cl minus. Therefore, my products are 2K plus plus 2Cl minus plus Br2. Once you're in this position, what you need to do is remove your spectator ions. And those are the ions that are exactly the same on either side. So in this case, that is my 2K plus, my potassium ions. So we get rid of those, and that is my ionic equation, which if I just neaten it up for you, is Cl2 plus 2I minus goes to 2Cl minus plus Br2. And that is my complete ionic equation. If we have a look at another example, so here I've got copper sulfate plus magnesium makes magnesium sulfate and copper. So the first thing I do is I look at the state symbols. My solid ones I can now put down below, which is my Mg and my Cu. And then I have a look and put in the charges of all the ions that I know. So I know sulfate is SO42 minus. You just have to remember that. I can put that on both sides. Magnesium is in group two. Therefore it loses two electrons and becomes Mg2 plus. So I can put my products down straight away. Cu plus Mg2 plus plus SO42 minus. Then if we look on the left hand side, I can put my sulfate in, but we don't know the copper just yet but we can work it out. We know sulfate is SO42 minus, therefore my positive charge, my cation, must be two plus overall. Now, because I've only got one copper, that copper is fully Cu2 plus. So I can put in Cu2 plus down below here. The next thing I need to do is remove my spectator ions, the things that are the same on both sides, which in this case is my SO42 minus. So I get rid of them, and that leaves me with my ionic equation of Cu2 plus plus Mg goes to Cu plus Mg2 plus, not forgetting your state symbols. Okay, let's see the type of question you could get in the exam, and it's very similar to what we've just been going through. So it says write the ionic equation for the following balanced equation. So you've got Zn, which is a solid, reacting with CuSO4, copper sulfate, which is aqueous, to form zinc sulfate, ZnSO4, aqueous, plus Cu, solid. So remember, put the ones that aren't aqueous down below as they are, work out from the charges that you know, which in this case is SO42 minus, what the charge of your copper ion is, what the charge of your zinc ion is, and then remove your spectator ions. So pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done them in. Okay, let's go through. So as we said, the first thing we do is we take our solids and we put them down below. So I'm going to end up with Zn, which is a solid, and Cu, which is a solid. What we then need to do is work out what the charge of our sulfate is. You just have to learn that, which is SO42 minus, which is the same on both sides. So we know straight away that's going to be our spectator ion. And from that, we can work out the charge of both zinc and copper. So if we've got SO42 2 minus, my overall charge for my anions is 2 minus, so my Zn, I've only got one of them, there's nothing else down here, must be 2 plus. So I have Cu plus Zn2 plus, which is aqueous, and SO4 
to minus, which is also aqueous. On the left, it's exactly the same. I've got SO4 to minus, therefore my copper, I've only got one of them, must be 2 plus. So I'll pop that in, Cu2 plus, plus SO4 to minus, put in my state symbols. Now if you just left it like that, you might get the marks, but you probably won't. It's always important to remove the spectator ions. So things are the same on both sides, let's get rid of them. So we can then rewrite that to get our full marks, which is Cu2 plus aqueous plus Zn, which is a solid, forms our Zn2 plus, which is aqueous, and our Cu, which is our solid. Doesn't matter which way around you put them, as long as you've got your reactants on the right side, you'll get one mark, and your products on the right side, you'll get the second mark. And that's everything there is to this video. I have got a review question for you, which is write the ionic equation for the following balanced equation. This time you've got 2Fe plus 3CuSO4 goes to Fe2SO4 3 plus 3Cu. Now nice and simply, all you have to do here, it's exactly the same. You know your sulfate is SO4 2 minus. You know copper therefore is going to be Cu2 plus. And you can work out the same over here. You've got SO4 2 minus. You've got three of them. So your charge is going to be 6 minus overall. So what is your charge for your iron going to be? You need to have 6 plus overall, but you've got two of them. So what's the charge for your iron going to be? Use that to write your balanced ionic equation. And that brings this video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.